एवरीवन आई होप यू आर लिंग वेल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोना फाइंड प्लेनेट डेंसिटी फॉर सिंपल क्यूबिक प्लेन्स ओके तो लेट्स क्विकली गेट स्टार्टेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड नो द फॉर्मूला दैट वी आर गोना यूज फॉर द प्लेनेट डेंसिटी कैलकुलेशन एंड वी नो दैट द प्लेनेट डेंसिटी इज गिवन बाय प्लेनेट डेंसिटी इज गिवन बाय फॉलोइंग फॉर्मूला planar density all right that is equals to net number of atom net number of atoms lying on the plane okay i have to complete that line uh, i'll write that thing here let's say i will denote planar density by sigma sign okay that is equals to that the thing i was going to write here was correct but there is no enough space to accommodate all of the words that's why i'm using here the symbol for the planar density which is sigma here and uh, that is equals to net number of atoms lying on the plane for which you are going to calculate the planar density the plane under consideration for Okay so net number of atoms lying on the plane divided by the area of the plane and let me write here in the subscript of uh, planar density as h k n l here i wrote h k l um this is the representation for the miller indices of a plane just to show that it would be different for different planes and yeah this is a formula this is the basic formula that we will be using in each of the cases now, now let's do it for triple one plane and first step is to draw the cube as usual then we'll draw the plane inside the cube since all of the miller indices are positive that is why this is the all positive origin and this is the x direction this is the y direction and this is the z direction these axis lines are really important i just highlighted them to show that these are the original axis lines and all other lines are just parallel lines to these axis lines okay and let's do another thing in rough work in rough work we know that we do that thing to take the inverse of each of these indices this is x index this is y index and this is z index inverse of these indices gives us the uh, intercepts for the plane and intercepts for the plane helps us to draw the plane inside the cube inverse of 1 is 1 inverse of 1 is 1 inverse of 1 is again 1 so let's use them to draw the plane inside the cube x intercept is 1 which means starting from origin to the other corner of the unit cell along x direction since it's x intercept and one means to the other corner of the unit cell starting from origin when you are talking about intercepts half means here okay 1 by 3 means here somewhere like that okay so one means to the other corner of the unit cell this is a point on the cube i i hope you can see it <laughs> uh, this is a point on the plane okay i said cube <laughs> by mistake and now next intercept is a y intercept which is one again and what we do is starting from a region to the other corner of the unit cell along y direction since y intercept is one starting from a region to the other corner of the unit cell along y direction this is the other corner so this is another point on the plane i'm making it big enough so that you can see it you can make smaller ones <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessary to make such big dots and uh, um, it's totally up to you uh, this is z intercept one again so starting from a region again to the other corner of the unit cell along z direction which is this corner these are the three points on the plane not these lines i just draw draw these lines to show that the path i'm taking but these are the three points on the plane and joining these three points together will make the plane 
let me draw it we'll join these two together we'll join these two together and this okay this is a triangular type of triangular shaped cube uh, plane okay it's like tilted like that like that inside a cube and now let's calculate planet density for it for for this first of all what i'll do is to find out the area of the plane and then we'll find out the net number of atoms lying on the plane which would be different here okay i promise it's different here now let's find out the area of the plane since it's a triangular shape so it will will be equal to 1 over 2 a uh, base into height this is the base of the triangle and if you see it's an equilateral triangle equilateral means all of these lengths of the triangle are equal because you know that um, this line as we have also calculated its length previously but we will do it again because sometimes students just jump into this part and will get confused that how I have calculated it and they just get frustrated when I am just referring to the calculation that I have done before so I will do that calculation again for you people um, this length is A this length is A these all these lengths which are drawn in gray line or A because they are parallel to each other but these lines have different length and we have to calculate them this is A and this is A and this is hypotenuse C let's calculate it using Pythagoras theorem I am calling this equation as equation number 2 for example let's do the rough work and the Pythagoras theorem means hypotenuse square equals base square perpendicular square C square equals A square plus A square I hope you got it and uh, this is the, this is the I took it as base and this as perpendicular okay so a square plus a square equals c square this is the Pythagoras theorem and c square equals 2a square c would be equals to under root 2a okay um, this is the length of this base and if you do the same calculation for these lengths this is the diagonal one another side of the um, plane this length is a and this length is a again use the Pythagoras theorem c square equals a square plus a square the same situation it will give you the length of this diagonal uh, uh, as under root 2a as well and if you do it for this one this is a this is a and this is hypotenuse again the same situation uh, the length would be under root 2a again so it's a kind of uh, it's an equilateral triangle where each of the uh, side length is equal to under root 2a equilateral triangle so i'm taking this as the base to make the process easy okay as anything could be taken as base but i'm taking this thing as base its length is c which is under root 2a we already know but its height is not known height means uh, projection of this on the base okay um, we can easily calculate it using the distance formula we'll find out the coordinates of this point coordinates of this point and we'll use the distance formula to find out the length of the uh, height so let's calculate the height we'll calculate it using the distance formula which tells us that to do this thing x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square and they're all multiplied by the lattice parameter a which is outside of this under root let's here x2 y2 and z2 are the points for um, this we can take this as z2 y2 or x2 or this it's arbitrary to choose one or two subscript for their uh, coordinate points let's say this is the this point is x2 y2 and z2 and let's say this point is x1 y1 z1 what is the coordinate what are the coordinates of this point to that coordinates means from origin starting from origin what distance or what movements we have to do along axis directions to reach that point okay 
starting from origin to reach this point what we only have to do is to move one unit along the z direction and you will reach that point no movements along x2 and y2 direction is needed that is why the coordinates are zero as well so the coordinates of z is one now what about this point to reach that point okay this point is at the center this is actually at the center point so here the x and y coordinates are 1 by 2 1 by 2 but z coordinates will be 0 because uh, it has got 0 height so starting from origin half here along x direction and half along y direction you will reach that point and no movement along z direction is needed that is why these are the coordinates of this point the distance formula will give us the length this length okay which is the height of the triangle let's put the value right here x2 minus x1 which is 0 minus 1 by 2 squared 0 minus 1 by 2 squared plus 1 minus 0 squared into a don't forget a <laughs> so 0 minus 1 by 2 is minus 1 by 2 whole square which make it 1 over 4 here again 1 over 4 plus 1 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is 1 by 2 plus 1 is 3 by 2 you can easily take its LCM it's under root 3 by 2 into a or you can separate the under roots as under root 3 by under root 2 a okay you can do this as well so this is the height and this is the base let's put into the expression number 2 to find out the area of the triangle so it's plane area of the plane area of the plane area is equals to 1 over 2 base under root 2 a height is under root 3 by under root 2 into a <laughs> so these under root cancel out and we are left with under root 3 by 2 a squared this is the area of 1 1 1 plane now let's find out the capital n thing which is the net number of atoms lying on the plane and let's do this thing now for this thing what we need to know is the angle between these two lines of the plane as you have noticed you must have noticed that thing and I tried to elaborate it as much as possible what you actually do is the angle of the atom total angle of atom is always 360 degree what you have to do is to find out the angle between the two lines of the plane that is inside the atom for example in that case it was 90 degree and these were actually the angles between the lines of the plane here as well what we have to do is to find out the angle between these lines of the triangle since the total angle of th atom is always 360 we just need to find out the angle of the angle between these lines inside the plane and we'll divide them to find out the contribution of atom to the plane so um, here what is the angle here how we can do that since it's a equilateral triangle as i told you people this information is really important the total angle in a triangle is 180 degree since it's a equilateral triangle so the angle is divided equally between these three lines so we'll divide the total angle inside a triangle divided by three gives us the angle at each of these corners of an equilateral triangle only for other triangles the angles are different but in equilateral triangles since all of the lines are equal the total angle is equally divided among all the corners this gives you 60 degrees so it's 60 degree here 60 degree here 60 degree here okay in circle total angle is 360 in, in a triangle total angle is 180 for it's divided equally uh, by 3 and you got 60 degree here the angle between these two lines is 60 degree so let us refer it here here the angle is 60 degree here the angle is 60 degree here the angle is 60 degree as well so to find out the atoms contribution to the plane what you will do is to divide uh, 60 degree by 360 degree the total angle of the atom okay this contribution this 60 degree of it is only inside the 
plane. So, in fraction, what what you will get is you will divide these things, and you got one over sixth. Six ones are and six six are thirty six now. So it's one by six by each atom. One by six by this atom, one by six by this atom, and one by six by this atom. Since all the angles are sixty degrees, so the ratio will be same. Um, and capital N would be equals to capital N is equals to one by three. Oh, sorry, one by six plus one by six plus one by six. Since there are only three sides and hence only three atoms contribution will count there are only three corners only they will contribute and none of the other will be there <laughs> so only this and it will become three by six taking the lcm gives us and it's one by two so uh, capital n equals one by two while area we saw was equals to under root 3 by 2 a square now let's find out the planet density for 1 1 1 plane and it is equals to capital n by a and it's 1 by 2 here divided by under root 3 by 2 a squared or you can write it like that to to ensure you are doing the right thing and you know that replacing division by multiplication sign inverses the thing that is coming Beside that, so you will two will come here and the numerator will become denominator to two cancel. So it's one over under root three a squared. This is the planar density for one 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 plan. It's one over under root three a squared, and the process is similar as we did before to convert it into to convert it into um, atomic radius expression. This is the planet density in terms of lattice parameter as we know that a equals 2r in simple cubic. So 1 over under root 3 into 2r whole squared and it's 1 over under root 3 4r squared and it's 1 over 4 under root 3r squared. This is the planet density in terms of the atomic radius. What are the units for example the values that you will get you will write atoms per meter square as its unit okay for example you get 12 multiplied by 10 to the power 12 so you will write atoms per meter square as its unit actually per meter square is its unit but you will write atom per meter square to show that is for the density of number of atoms on the plane and since number of a number counting of something doesn't have any units we just show that these are the number of what number of atoms per meter square so that is how you will do that